Hi, everybody. Hi. I am so sorry I'm getting a little bit late on the start this evening. Junebug wanted to get outside and get a walk, so I wanted to make sure. And I actually, thank you all. I obviously don't have as many people here to see Wendy Williams as I have had for uh, Miss Foodie, but that's okay. Welcome, everybody who's here. So, Austin, I know you've been waiting for a while. You grew up watching Wendy. I hope this isn't going to make us too sad. Yeah, she's, yes, she has a she has a type of dementia, and there's multiple types of dementia. So we are going to be covering some sensitive topics tonight, and I did kind of want to branch out and be able to talk about other celebrities, influencers, and people who are experiencing health issues and potentially to take any questions here. So just thank you all. Thank you, Rosebud, for being here. I think I don't know how to pronounce this correctly. It's a German name, like Werschnefer. I You need to put it in phonetically for me, so I don't. And then Live Till Life. You really loved her show. Oh, I know. My, my mother was a huge fan of hers when she came over from the UK and watched uh, on my TV. So I, unfortunately, was always at work. So I would hear her show on the TV in the rooms of patients, but I really got very little chance to watch her. But I did watch some of it, and I know she was very controversial, and I was more interested because the type of dementia that she has been expressed to have, which is, we'll read the press release, we'll take a look at some things, but was an aphasia type of dementia uh, there's obviously talk that it is substance use uh, induced uh, from alcohol and there's other talks of other substances she potentially consumed and I was thinking also that not that it's a related type of how because they're saying she has alcohol related but that's not what the press release so we'll take a look at the press release but Bruce Willis is the other person who is currently in the media being spoken about who has aphasia dementia. And aphasia means somebody who is losing the ability to produce or understand speech. So they it goes both ways for those who have this type of aphasic dementia. So Bruce Willis has this type of dementia. And that's one of the reasons why. So I'm going to get my little puff to put my feet on. And that's one of the reasons why he has obviously stepped away um, from the uh, entertainment industry. And so there has been a recent documentary released. And I think I have a plan tonight. Um, and we're going to potentially take a little peek see at that. I don't want to get in trouble with the, with the folks over at Lifetime. Uh, but if you are interested... You can actually watch all, I think, I think I have two episodes, it seems, that's unlocked for free. But you can go on to uh, a streaming like Google and look up Lifetime. And you can actually watch the first episodes of the documentary that's causing all the buzz around Wendy Williams at the moment. And Lifetime is going to show that free until March the 5th. So obviously... If you do have more interest, I got the light right behind me. Uh, <laughs> a great setup today. If you do have more interest, obviously, in watching uh, the documentary, I recommend going over and checking it out. Um, they've they've released it all over the place, so it's all over the spot. Hi, Team Psychwood. Good evening. Thank you for joining us. <laughs> I've you know I obviously decided I had to come in a little bit earlier than I wanted to because I know some other people are getting out at around eight o'clock to do their reactions to some foodie nonsense. And I'm thinking about just filming a video regarding her recent rages, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. I don't try to get too much into necessarily all of that, but she's really angry at some reaction channels at this moment as always. Hi, two Dalmatians in the pit. Thank you guys for being here tonight. And Miss Catherine, thank you. Oh, okay. Hmm. Well, we won't tell anybody. Your secret is safe with us, Miss Catherine. 
Yeah, it's this is a very it's this is a really sad situation. Um, just to kind of give you a little bit of a background, I myself had worked with a lot of patients who had at the end of life dementia. And there's so many different types of dementia. And we'll we'll look a little bit into it and we'll kind of peek into some of Wendy's little bits and pieces. And I, like I said, I won't keep you guys here too long. I just wanted to kind of start to expand <laughs> as a creator, talking about just things that we see in the media around health and really around, obviously, celebrities and influencers because they're the ones that come up in the papers and often their lives are quite public like this lady's was. So Wendy Williams is only 59 years old and I'm going to bring up real quick the promo that was released by Lifetime for this documentary and then we'll read the, I actually have a you know, I actually, <laughs> Foodie will get 900 people watch her rage. I'll get a few people watch me talk about, you know, dementia. <laughs> but that's okay. I, I just love everybody being here. Yes, yes. It's, yeah, we're going to talk about all of this. Yeah, but not everybody gets it. So that's why not everybody who has alcohol will experience. And it's actually pretty unusual to see it in a female patient. Uh, it's very sad. And like I said, I've had to work with these patients at end of life. And the end of life for these patients is really very, very, very sad. Yeah, it's really sad. So all this info just came out. Trying, Yes, it just, it's really, so I think it's kind of been coming out over the years that she obviously had some types of issues regarding her sort of health. She has what's also known as Graves disease, which is a type of thyroid disorder, um, which, you know, causes those sort of bulging eyes. Uh, there was a very famous British actor many, many years ago. Um, some of you may remember him. He was in the movie Young Frankenstein with... Uh, what was the name of the, uh, oh goodness, the gentleman who played Willy Wonka originally. Oh gosh, I, his name escapes me. Anyway, he, the actor who played like his sidekick, who was a British actor, also suffered from this disorder, which causes this like bulging um, eyes. Yes, that's why she had the eyes that were, that's, that Sandra, that's why she had those types of eyes, because she also was experienced Graves' disease. Um, so she had, you know, some medical issues that she was multi, that's it, multi Felman. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yes, it was. Thank you, Marlene Dietrich. Marlene came in. She knows her, she knows her Hollywood. <laughs> but yes, it was multi Felman. Thank you. And the actor was Gene Wilder. Thank you. Absolutely. Yes. Mrs. Bush had it too. The Grays to see Wilder world. Yeah. That's, yeah. And uh, so she was experiencing that along with some other issues. And she was obviously a very controversial figure. So what we're going to do this evening, and I have it all planned. And like I said, I'll let you guys, if you want to get back to, you know, watching about foodie rages, then we will. I did put out a quick poll, but I don't think anybody really saw it. Just asking, who should we cover next? I know Amberlynn Reed came out with something new yesterday that was very brief. I thought we could look at hers and then the other video she did where she spoke about walking a mile. My other I do want to talk about is Glitters and her thinking that she's a runner. Um, I have a lot of uh, clips where she thinks she's a runner and I would love to cover that. And then, oh, hey, hey everyone, hey Angel Glass. Yeah, you do know your old Hollywood Marlene Dietrich and I love that. I love that. Yes, Amber's content, Sandra, is really dry. And I don't know how we can spice that up. It's really dry. The only way I can spice that up is through an old clip I found through um, Life by Jen um, that was quite foretelling uh, to Amber's situation. So that's the only way we can spice up Amber's content, I think. Yeah. <laughs> Anna jumps, I cringe. Yes. Anna is. I always say, not a runner. She's a jogger and walker. 
And I think we do have to have a conversation around for health reasons. Really, is that healthy to watch somebody with no training encouraging people with no doctor's advisement on her content to be out there and doing all this crazy running and stuff? So, yeah. She also had lipedema. Yes. Yes, she did. She had, which also Amber Lynn is somebody who has lymphedema. So she had a lot medically going on as well as obviously we'll take a look. And there's some, you know, people from her childhood are saying, no, no, she had no substance use issues. There's been no doctor has come in and said this. Obviously her camp is coming out with a press release, but obviously when you have situations, especially with celebrities, and they have cognitive changes, and maybe the family isn't, say, as tight-knit as, say, somebody like Bruce Willis, whose family seems to be, you know, very supportive and probably taking very good care of him and his finances. You have Wendy Williams over here, and there's just a lot going on. And obviously her husband cheated on her. He got some other girl pregnant. That was his mistress. It, she seemed to just really have a downfall after all that came about. Um, so yeah, so this is somebody who publicly is now having, you know, because she was such a public person, I think her camp has kind of thought to themselves that they are going to publicly talk about that. And like, like I said, we're just going to watch a little bit of her lifetime this evening at the end. Um, it's just so sad. It is really sad. It's very sad. And unfortunately, obviously, the tra trajectory of somebody with dementia, you know, that's a end-of-life diagnosis. I'll just be honest. There's no recovery from this diagnosis, and it's actually probably one of the hardest deaths that I've had to see is with patients with dementia. It's, well, I mean, I've seen a lot of hard deaths, um, cause I worked in hospice for an extended period of time. I have had to help a lot of families and their loved ones at end of life. And so I've had a lot of experience because dementia is one of the very common diagnoses that we have in hospice. And so obviously that re is really where kind of Wendy's family is at. And I think they are releasing a lot of this. And Lifetime is very generously, yeah, lost most of his memory. Yeah, yeah, it is really sad. And so I think we're going to talk a little, yeah, doctors say after, type 3 is Alzheimer's is a type 3 diabetes. Oh, Lord. Oh, gosh. I don't even want to think about more diabetes. You know, there's so many things that also there's, I've had very young patients with Alzheimer's. I will let you know, like early 60s and stuff. And Wendy Williams, it's hard for me to think she is only 59 years old because I sit in front of you at 54, turning 55 this year. And so to think about how few years that is from my own life at this time. And some of you may be even older than Miss Wendy here. Uh, that's really hard. So we are going to be talking about some very sensitive subjects. And I'm hoping that we can, you know, talk about it with some sensitivity. I hope that if you do have questions around any of these health topics, feel free to ask, as I am a registered nurse here in the United States. And obviously any of this is not to treat the person that we are discussing this evening, but this is only for information and educational purposes only. All right. You cry. Oh, oh, yeah. She's, when you see, right. And that is actually the lymphedema that she is experiencing. And that is something that Amber Lynn, and I think I want to say glitters also, I want to say, I don't think she just has lipedema. I think she has lymphedema and lipedema. I think she may have both. So, you know, that's not something, that's something that we do see on our, our friends in, is she a, in girl world is this particular disorder. So we're going to learn a lot from Wendy today. So be prepared. Two years younger than you. Isn't that sad? She really is young. Okay. So let me bring up her lifetime I'm going to go over here to the Daily Mail. I'm going to actually bring up, I'm ready to go. 
Okay, I'm going to bring up her lifetime. Oh, sorry, guys. Trying to get out of here. Sorry. Trying to get it ready. Huh? It's going to get out of that page. All right, let me get over here. All right, sorry, guys. All right, let me bring up the lifetime promo for this documentary series. And some of you may have already seen it because you have lifetime. But if you don't have access to lifetime, for those of you who are, say, in the UK or Australia or any of the folks who are from any other parts of the globe, lifetime is very generously providing access to the series for free up until March the 5th on their channel directly. So if you want to go over and take a look at that, because we're just going to take a peek, see a little bit of it this evening, um, I would recommend you do so. And I think I'm going to binge watch it all tonight because Chantel is just so salty and ragey. I can't take her anymore. Okay. Here we go. So this is where I wanted to go. So this is the teaser that Lifetime originally released. And it's a four-part uh, series. So, yeah. Okay. All right. To stay ahead of the career curve, you need a degree with a destination. Sorry, the Daily Mail. That's why University of Phoenix offers more than 100 online programs aligned to over 300 real-world careers in areas like business, technology, and health. See, I had it set up earlier that we didn't have to go through a video, but we're just going to have to deal with the Daily Care. Mail. It's going to want us to In fact, 83% of our surveyed students believe that their University <laughs> of Phoenix education provides them with skills and knowledge right, immediately you. applicable to their career. Learn more uh, at phoenix.edu. I probably should have gotten it off of YouTube. <laughs> From six years old, all I wanted was to be famous. Showtime. There's only one Wendy Williams. The boss is walking, everybody. Nobody can do it like Wendy. No one. People love Wendy. You are a star to all of us. She was in her living room every single day for 12 years. Yeah, I guess that'll do. And that's what people responded to, her authenticity. And then at the peak of her career, she was gone. Are we ready? Yeah, we're on you. All right, and away we go. Love you, Wendy. All I know is how to be famous. I really want to be back on television. You're gonna be back on TV. That's yep. easy. My mom has done a great job making it seem like everything is. Oh, sorry, okay. I gotta keep. Wendy, make sure you look here. One, two, three. But in reality, there's something wrong going on. Did you see a neurologist to find out if I'm crazy? Mm-hmm. Oh my God, no, I can't do this. I can't do this. I have to sit down again. She got put in front of a judge and given a guardian. That was when they took her away from us. I have no money. And I'm going to tell you something. If it happens to me, it could happen to you. As her family, we were all sitting on the sidelines watching. And she was crying out for help. Did you drink this whole thing today? Keep it there. Okay. Keep it there. My mom, she always talks about how she wants to work. I feel as though she's worked enough. She has people around who are yes people and allowing this to continue. This is all too much. Go! Bye! I have no idea where we are. This doesn't look like anything familiar. I think she's losing memory. Have you guys noticed that? How dare him? I control me. I wait one thirty-three. Anybody could look at her and tell this is not just alcohol. There's something more going on. <laughs> I miss my family. Please be here. No matter how many times somebody may fall down, you gotta lift them back up. We all make choices in life. We all go through our challenges. She's still a person. How you doing? That's my sister. There have been random people around you. Stealing money from me. Getting money, whatever the case may be. Enough. Can you tell me where your sister is? No, I don't know the exact location of where she is. I feel like the Guardian has not done a good job of protecting my mom. My life. My life. Right now, she's weak and vulnerable. And she needs to be around people who aren't going to take advantage of that. I have no friends. You know how many people come out to support you? You know how many people love you? No, I don't. Everything is so good. 
I know. I think that the guardianship system is broken. We are her family. And you tell me that I'm not capable of taking care of my sister. What would you do? What should I do? I love being famous. But family is everything. So, so good to see you again, Dad. It's good to see you, babe. Oh, right. <laughs> I can stop there. The Daily Mail is going to make us go through another ad, but isn't that quite? Yeah, they have they have it on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so you can go to YouTube and watch it because they have it just on their channel directly too. Well, maybe I'll just pull it up on YouTube then. Oh, you just found all this out, John? I know it's she looks bad. Yeah, and we're going to take a look at another channel called the Windy Archive on YouTube that like did some clips. So let me take this off and I want to bring the press release up that her actual, the, right, exactly. Hyperthyroid, doesn't it? Oh, people can get very, um, because of the hyperthyroidism, yes. Weight loss can be part of that disease process. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, and like hypothyroidism, where people start to actually get start to put on weight. I actually thought Amy Schumer might be quite interesting to look at. Um, it's the graves. Oh, you have graves, Angela, Angel of Glass. Well, then you may be able to educate some people here in the chat what graves disease is, as that was a disorder that Wendy Williams was experiencing. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And that so that's often why uh you will see people and they and it, did you start to lose weight, Angel of Glass too, along with it? Um that often is something that we will see. So let's take a look at the press release that her camp uh sent out. Um and this was very recent and I think it came out potentially around about the time the lifetime uh video came out he said your cat has thyroid problems yeah oh i'm so sorry yeah yeah it's uh i you know i've had obviously uh patients and friends uh i think it potentially affects more men than women or maybe women more than men or maybe it's equal i can't remember i'd have to look you have the hypothyroidism yeah, our thyroids really can do a number on us. It's very good to make sure that you're monitoring your thyroid stimulating hormones. Mine was very low and made me very nervous. Anyway, not to talk about me. Let's take a look at this press release that was released from her camp about what they're saying here. And uh, hold on. Because this, and it was very brief, but this is what they stated. And I'm just going to read this out. It says, Wendy Williams, and this was released on the 22nd of February. So it was just before the release of her documentary series. And obviously, you know, Wendy is still with us, um, but she, you know, obviously, you know, we have to wonder. Who is leading this? You know, when you watch the documentary, you know, I I just, you know, suggest that everybody make their own decisions about what they feel in the situation between her, her guardianships, uh, other people around her. I mean, it's I think it's very difficult when you have celebrity involved because obviously there's a whole amount there's a whole different type of levels of money and you know her tv show was initially taken over by another sherry and i can't remember sherry's last name pop it in the chat but she took over and it was the wendy williams show for a little bit and then it became the sherry show um so that kind of is how it goes so anyway this is what was released um and it says on behalf of will um Sorry, let me start all over again. On behalf of Wendy Williams Hunter, her care team is sharing this very personal update with her cherished fans, friends, and supporters to correct inaccurate and hurtful rumors about her health. And so I think that's very important. I think it's very important too that we look at information that is being released potentially 
Um, by this is as it's by Wendy Williams. This is her team. Again, we don't know really, you know, in that clip that we saw, there is contention about the people around her, the family, the son, the team. So we're not sure. As Wendy's fans are aware, in the past, she has been open with the public about her medical struggles with Graves' disease and lymphedema, as well as other significant challenges related to her health. Over the past years, questions have been raised at times about Wendy's ability to process information, and many have speculated about Wendy's condition, particularly when she began to lose words, act erratically at times, and have difficulty understanding financial transactions. And anybody who has followed her story in the news at all, there has been quite a few stories released about her behaviours. There were a situation, I think, where she was at a financial institution and she was denied access to her bank account. And she then announced that information on social media. There's just been a myriad of stories involving who's caring for her, how she is looking in public, you know, just all sorts of speculation. And I almost think that the release of this documentary, because I think they were making the documentary about initially her trying to return back to her job with the television station or trying to get back into the media in some capacity. And throughout the making of the documentary, it became kind of apparent that she was struggling with some neurological issues. And then obviously we have this. So let's continue. In 2023, after undergoing a battery of medical tests, Wendy was officially diagnosed with primary progressive aphasia and frontal temporal dementia. Now, I will let you know, it really is very extensive, the testing, especially here in the United States. I don't know about other parts of the globe, but here in the United States, it is almost like pulling teeth to get neurological diagnoses because it can potentially affect how you are covered by insurance, it could potentially, it just has a lot of different implications here in the health system that is beyond just a diagnosis. And you have to be really clear cut about it because you could potentially, if you misdiagnose at all, you could change how a patient is able to receive care through their insurance. And so you just have to be really cautious. And so it can really take some time. So the fact I think that they are releasing this as a diagnosis, in my professional opinion, means there is some certainty to this. But there was a friend of hers who says there's no official doctor's diagnosis. I don't know where the friend is getting this information. She says she's a lifelong friend of Miss Wendy's. Um, that was something that was released in the Daily Mail. It just seems like every time somebody, you know, somebody, especially someone struggling like Wendy, I don't know if her friend coming out is harming or helping her at this time. Because we'll watch and you'll see. We'll, you know, make your own assessment, I think. Now, they explain here, aphasia, which we talked about earlier, condition affecting language and communication abilities, and frontal temporal dementia, a progressive disorder impacting behavior and cognitive functions have already presented significant hurdles in Wendy's life. And I can let you know, like I said, unfortunately with dementia, what ends up happening is because the brain starts to kind of shut down its functions. And obviously anything to do with the frontotemporal lobe, if you go in and take a look at see what it connects to, everything that that part of the brain sends messages for is going to be affected by that. That's like your reasoning. You know, when you, you know, you also often, you know, hear about people talking about, and this is, that means it's like this part and these parts of her brain are affected by this dementia. And it means that she progressively could learn, you know, she may stop having, uh, wanting to eat over time. It, it, it's very sad. Okay, let me keep going. And uh, so, yeah, Wendy would not, have received confirmation of these diagnoses were it not for the diligence of her current care team 
who she chose and the extraordinary work of specialists at Wheel Cornell Medicine. Receiving a diagnosis has enabled Wendy to receive the medical care she requires. The decision to share the news was difficult and made after careful consideration, not only to advocate for understanding and compassion for Wendy, but to raise awareness about aphasia and frontal, frontal temporal lobe, or sorry, pardon me, frontotemporal dementia and support the thousands of others facing similar circumstances. Unfortunately, many individuals diagnosed with aphasia and frontotemporal dementia face stigma and misunderstanding, particularly when they begin to exhibit behavioral changes but have not yet received a diagnosis. Yeah, and those behavioral changes can be quite startling for families. And so, and it can be very extensive and time consuming and costly to get these diagnoses. So I just don't think that this information is coming out lightly. And like I said, we're going to take a look at her last episode, some clips of her last episode um, that was made before she was off the air. There is hope that with early detection and far more empathy, the stigma associated with dementia will be eliminated. And those affected will receive the understanding, support, and care they deserve and need. Yes, because dementia, I think if you have watched anything about certain news stories, there have been cases where elderly members of our community have not received always the best treatment from law enforcement because some of the younger members of community may not really understand the signs and symptoms of dementia and how it affects somebody quite dramatically in their behaviors and how they act and respond. It can make people very childlike. And it is, it's very, just, it's very stressful for the families. Okay, last little bit. It says, Wendy is still able to do many things for herself, which over time she will, unfortunately, she'll not. And patients with dementia do sadly become bed bound. And uh, it's, it's pretty sad. I, 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 I don't really want to be the downer on my life, but it, it's a very hard thing for a family to have to endure because they can go quite some time without eating or drinking and still being alive. And that can be very stressful for families, obviously. And they can lose a lot of weight until they're like real thin in the bed. It's very hard, very hard to, to work with families and have them see somebody that they love go through it so i do really hope that wendy does get really good care and i hope that we do start to have more conversations about these and potentially how it affects everybody in our communities so anyway it says most importantly she maintains her trademark sense of humor and is receiving the care she requires to make sure she is protected and that her needs are addressed she is appreciative of the many kind thoughts and good wishes being sent her way. And the only reason why I feel, and this is the PR news, why if anybody wants to take a look at that. And one of the reasons why I feel like that was a really good thing. Uh, yeah, I'm so glad you came to join us too. Yeah, we're doing a little bit different. Hi, Sam. Hi, everybody. I want to make sure I'm out before eight o'clock because I know Miss Are You Serious is, is about to... Uh, go live this evening and she's going to be looking at some foodie stuff and I just I have to take a break from foodie sometimes you know and as a medical person I really want to be able to you know for those who are interested because I think you're going to hear a lot about this with her and so I think understanding really the medical parts of it and then kind of getting what potentially they're trying to get us to express at this time is like using it as an opportunity to learn. And I think it was very easy in the past for a lot of celebrities to, you know, there are ones who like to be very private, but as her camp stated, she's always been very public. So it seems it would be in her sort of personality to do it. And I think to talk about something as hard as dementia and how misunderstood it, it really is a very difficult disease. Anybody who's had a family with the Alzheimer's, 
anybody who's had anybody with family who's had vascular dementia, uh, Louis Body's dementia, uh, alcohol and tooth dementia, which they do not mention in this. They talk about a whole different type of dementia. Uh, we'll talk about the alcohol and tooth because you saw she, that she was slamming that vodka down. Um, and so we'll take a quick look at that. But before we do, I wanted us to go over and look at some clips from her final episode that she had. Uh, and it's short, so we'll break it up. But I'm just curious because I have not seen any of the clips from her last episode. Um, and so I am curious as to how she looks. Your cousin just passed away. Oh, wow. Wow, shits and giggles. I am sorry to hear that. Do you know what type of dementia it was? Because there's so many different types. And I think that's something because Bruce Willis obviously has aphasic dementia. Uh, there's vascular dementia, alcohol induced dementia, Louis Body's dementia, obviously this frontotemporal dementia, you know, depending on obviously where the dementia is probably affecting the brain, obviously Alzheimer's is often miss kind of Alzheimer's is a little bit different from dementia though because dementia can come from more of a usually a vascular reason as to why that uh I think you know with you know off there's different reasons but Alzheimer's literally the brain starts to shrink and that's what is causing the Alzheimer's disease progressions. The brain literally shrinks over time. Whereas with dementia, the brain doesn't shrink, but it stops to either have not enough oxygen or brain cells start to just kind of die off like the alcohol induced. So it's a little bit different than the Alzheimer's, but they all kind of present as the same. Yeah, that was young, Chits and Giggles. I'm so sorry for your cousin for that. That's very, very young. That's very young. Yeah, that's hard. That's a, and it's that's hard. That's really hard. Wow, that's young. Wow, I'm 55 this year, so that's really hard. To, when you hear that somebody you know so young, so young. Wow. Okay, so this is what I wanted to bring up about this one. Oh, that's me. Okay, I don't need me. Let's get, let's get rid of me. Let me make sure there's no questions. Let's see. You have an aunt. I have to ask my aunt. Okay. It came on slow. And yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, oh, I'm so sorry. I'm sorry you had to experience that in your family. Yeah, I'm so sorry. Well, I hope this is an okay episode for you to be able to watch today. And we're going to obviously, we tend to be quite sensitive here. There's no roasting today. I didn't even bring up the roasting um, little thing today because in reality I just really wanted to have a nice conversation um, about this because I think we're going to be hearing a lot about it over the next few uh, months and I'm not sure how progressive she is now at this time I don't know I don't think she's being seen out and so yeah, it's very sad. Okay, so let's just get into here. Let's get into her last episode. And I do believe there was some potential uh, signs of her having issues. So let's go. It's very short. We'll kind of break it up. Thank you for supporting our show. Say hello to my co-host, my studio audience. Oh, Mm -hmm. I'm doing okay. Let's get started. It's time for hot topics. Look at everyone's got the panini masks on. <laughs> oh. Everyone had fun at Wendy, man. He was fun. She held no bars, man. He was, he was, he was fun. But let's look at the legs. Um, the lower part, I think, so is where Ari her is claiming was. that uh, Erica Bena <laughs> damaged his property, and he wants her to pay him fifty thousand dollars. 
Does she have fifty thousand dollars? <laughs> Debatable. Maybe. <laughs> Allegedly, Erica poured bleach on his sneakers and, and cut his shoelaces. <laughs> then she poured paint in his motorcycle pipes and gas tank. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Just in time for summer. <laughs> uh, why'd she do this? He's probably cheating again. Or maybe he's not back from Jamaica. Or maybe he is, but hasn't been by the house to see the baby. Exactly. There could be a number of things that Safari <laughs> did wrong. <laughs> uh, Erica, this is not time for you to be petty about this. Just let it go. You knew what he was when you got with him. You know what he is while you're with him. And you know what he'll be long after you dump him. Yeah. Now, I don't know if you guys are noticing kind of what I'm noticing while I'm watching her. <laughs> you didn't like Wendy Williams at the beginning? Yeah, I think nobody liked her, but she was so, like, out there and then so open. She seems drunk or confused. Yes, Sandra. Thank you. Absolutely. You probably heard her slur her words. People have mentioned I slur, and I will just let you guys know. <laughs> and I get embarrassed. I actually have a lisp. <laughs> you can probably hear it. And I had to work as, with a speech therapist when I was a child uh, because of it. And so I can't say my M's and my N's sometimes very well in words. I get the really, I used to be aminal and that, you know, sort of, you know, just mess things up. And so I can, you know, appreciate when somebody is like seeming like they're drunk, you know, with their speech. But she is so, if you've watched her from over the years, she seems like she's reading from a cue card. Her delivery is very slow. She's exactly, she's zoning out and having trouble getting back on track. Yeah. She has stumbled and she took that long stop there for a moment. Yeah. When she filmed from home, I knew she was drunk or high. Your mom had a lisp too, Miss Sam? Yeah, it's hard. <laughs> <laughs> I try my best to enunciate uh, as clearly as I can, and uh, it still it still trips me up. Um, despite the lisp, though, I was been a public speaker and worked as a teacher for many years, and have not let it have not ever let it uh, hold me back in the public arena. So I just you know it is what it is. You know you got you know. No, we we don't. None of us come out perfect. <laughs> it gives us character. <laughs> oh well, thank you. Shits and giggle. I really try to enunciate. I promise you. Um, but when I get sometimes, you know, going for a long time, it can I can get tripped up. But yeah, she really seemed uh, from a medical assessment, you know, and obviously this is the greatest quality clips that they found because I think the difficulty is is that. She had a channel on YouTube, and once she got sick, I think they took literally everything off down. So these are coming from the Windy Archive channel, if you want to go check them out. I did put all the links to everything that I've used tonight, obviously in the descriptions below. But yeah, she looks really, you know, she just doesn't have the delivery. Who knows at this point if it's a mix of her... Uh, difficulties with the dementia coming through and there is talk that she's had the alcohol induced and we'll talk about that one after we look at these clips okay and then we're gonna look at a little bit of her lifetime and then we're gonna wrap up tonight's live let everyone get on with their night i'm just so happy to see that you're all having I'm trying to get my best um, connection here so i do apologize i'm trying to not overdo everything so i can get oh you're right on time pam don't worry I'm trying to get my best connection over here. I think everybody is jumping on. So I've tried to turn off. There we go. I turned off my phone just to give me some more. There we go. Beautiful. Your mom's a retired TA. Oh, yeah. Yeah. She's, you know, at this time, there's nothing that can be 
improved it, uh, other than just making sure that she's comfortable and she has what she needs. There's no, obviously, PTOTST from Miss Wendy. But, yeah, let's just keep on watching and see how she does because she's not done very well. Although, although Safari does say that their home security cameras caught her. Caught her doing what? Um, pouring bleach on the sneakers. <laughs> oh. <Yep>. So? <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> he probably deserved it. Of course he did. <laughs> Yes, to the scientist and a chemistry professor, and she's here with some amazing experiments. We love when she comes here. Say hello to our friend, Dr. Kate Lieberdorf. Hi, Dr. Kate. Hi. Hi, it's so good to see you. You too, what are we doing? Oh, lots of things. I've got three experiments here because I just came out with a new book. It's called yeah. It's Elemental. Yeah, so it's great. my first book for adults. I go through all the science and like the busiest day of your life. So we start with breakfast. Then we go to an early morning workout. We go to the bar. We go to the beach. And it's awesome. Uh -huh. <laughs> but the thing is, is that Kate always says there are not enough girls interested in becoming chemists. So on a serious note, if you're going to college and you don't know what you want to be, why don't you try chemistry? Yes. Or any science. Any of the science. Any science. Yes. All right, what are we doing? What's okay, that? this is magnetic slime. I love this one. I'm so excited to bring this to you. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is add glue. You guys want quality glue here. If you're doing it at home, do not <laughs> I kind of like the glue, idea of a science experiment, acetate, but she's very. Okay? Ooh, he's right. That's right. Okay. So, <laughs> so then what we're going to do is we're going to add some iron. You can use iron fillings. You can use iron oxide powder. I love it. Can you get that at the hardware store yeah. with iron? Yeah, you can. Or ordering it online anywhere. That works. Okay. And then once that's stirred, now you're going to add your contact solution. Okay, what is that? Ooh, is that what it's there we go. Contact solution. Yeah, just contact solution like you use for your eyes. It's oh, like, for your eyes. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> contact lens solution. Contact lens solution, exactly. So the reason we do that is it has boron in there and it goes through the polymerization. So it basically is going to take our glue and turn it more into a slime. Now, yes, after like two to three minutes, it turns like really oozy goozy. Okay. And then after two to three days, it turns into like a silly putty. So I actually made this in Texas and flew across the country with it for you. Can you touch it? Yeah. Yeah, you can slide out. Oh, wow. yeah, it's awesome, isn't it? Cool? Oh, yeah, it? yeah. Here, it's goopy. You're gonna get all your hands. Do you care? Uh, no. Okay. Uh oh. Problem. <laughs> oh yeah. Roll it, roll it, roll it, roll it off your hands. <laughs> love it, love it. You're lucky we have we have two months and two weeks to get this all cleaned up. <laughs> okay. But we said it's magnetic, right? So I've got these oh. neodymium magnets. And did you see that? Oh, wow. Yeah, go for it. And then, oh, so, oh did you feel that? Uh -huh, uh -huh. And so it'll pull it all the way up so we can defy gravity, or we can dump it in here. And if you watch, it actually eats the magnet. Do you see that? Yes. So, so if you have children, this is all fun stuff to do at home as well. Super fun stuff. And you can get all this stuff at a hardware store, anywhere. It's awesome. OK. Mm. Okay. So you stay right there, Wendy. Right. And then I'm going to do this one over uh -uh. here. So this is a classic chemistry experiment. Okay. I do this every single year in my classroom. It's really simple to do. So all you need are some... So obviously, my thought is that Wendy is not really interacting. And I wonder if Kate, the chemist, was told to tell Wendy to hang back at the desk or if this is going to explode. One of the two. I'm still fascinated. But Wendy just... Wow, her energy on this episode. And then obviously, you know, th there is potential that at the time she was drinking as the rumors, you know, were said at the time. There's talk that she might have been abusing other substances as well, other than just alcohol. And there is, you know, potentially this, you know, dementia is, you know, it's usually a disease or disorder, I should say, that takes, you know, some years to start to develop. Um, and then it's, it's sort of slow and insidious sometimes. So who knows? There's a lot of things at play. She obviously has Graves disease. Polystyrene oh, packing a number of things, And then some tap water. Affected. So let's see this first one here. Okay. Oh, Lord. What's that going to do? She is nothing. disconnected. <laughs> Absolutely nothing. Okay, so you saw oh, that. That's our control. Oh, wow. Now we're going to try another thing. The only thing I'm going to change is instead of using tap water, I'm going to use bottled water. Yes. Ready? 
Oh, wow. Oh, oh my oh. gosh. Oh, oh wait, wow, 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 wow. <laughs> Wow. What did you just prove? Okay, so here's the thing. Technically, it's not a classic chemistry experiment. It's a classic chemistry prank. Uh, so <laughs> what we do, I just did this on TikTok and everybody freaked out. It's so fun. So, okay, yes, this is tap water, but this one is not bottled water. It's actually acetone. And so acetone has some, oh, yes. Okay, what's next, Kate? Well, let me explain it. So what happens here is there's polystyrene. It's a nonpolar uh, material here. And then the acetone has a nonpolar side. So when they come together, you can actually dissolve it, which is so cool. Okay. Do you like it? Uh huh. Do you want to do another experiment? Sure. Come on. Okay. So yes, nail polish what we have nail here nail. is this beautiful, beautiful cake. Oh, I see what's going on. Yeah. I need you to stand there. Okay. Exactly. <laughs> So, yeah, uh, I don't think Wendy is helped by the fact her guest is kind of hyperactive over here. <laughs> That's why I'm kind of confused that it's alcohol dementia because she's clearly right. Well, that's, you know, dementia can be, you know, vascular type dementias are, you know, potentially... Uh, or substance use is often will lead to brain cell death that if you don't have, you know, obviously your brain cells are dying off, then that can lead to dementias over time because you're not going to have brain functioning and you're not going to be able to see signals to the rest of your body to do activities. You've got to have your brain in working order to send signals to do the activities that we need. And so when dementia sets in, it can shut down all, all types of activities, uh, your appetite, your thinking, your cognition, your speech, your emotions, everything. And each part of the brain obviously affects different things that we do. So it's, it's, it's a pretty, it's pretty, it's a pretty bad one. Yeah, she was, she was, that's why, you know, I think that it's kind of, you know, that's why I call this the price of notoriety, because I think there are going to be people that aren't necessarily going to feel compassion towards a polemic individual like Wendy Williams was that she rubbed a lot of people up the wrong way. She could be really, you know, hot, difficult, and I think even her personal life to deal with. She got her start by gossiping about other people. So there's a lot of things that in her character, and I think this is something that we also struggle with when we look at Foodie Beauty, is looking at these individuals and their behaviors and then you know sort of seeing them kind of get really poor health outcomes uh often brought by some of the lifestyle choices that they had and wondering whether you're having any empathy or sympathy for this person or whether you think it's kind of like oh well you know kind of they got they're just just what they their justice you know and i think that when you are somebody who works in healthcare, obviously I've never sort of, you know, ever look, approach it that way, I hope, because you always want, you know, people to not suffer and for everybody to have their best health outcomes, whether that's just even helping somebody at end of life and making sure that they are remaining comfortable and the family and loved ones understand the dying process and because that's really, that's where Wendy is at now. Wendy is not going to return to health. She is not going to return back to television except through this documentary. And her trajectory and prognosis with these diagnoses is that she is at end of life now. So she, that, it's pretty sad. And so, yeah, there are a lot of stories about her being awful to people. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. How much meat is also 
Right, right. And so, you know, you have to wonder, you know, as she got meaner to people in the background, was that because she was getting sick, you know? But obviously, when she wasn't at that point, she was a, you know, known to be quite a gossip and that's how she got her start. So, but still, I've had to have times where I've had individuals that I've had to have care extended who have tried to unalive themselves. And the reason why they have done that action is because they have been somebody who has essayed children. And so they are a known person um, and they were getting ready to be arrested for activities that were against minors and they attempted to unalive themselves and they end up in the hospitals. And so you as a nurse have to still care for these patients as much as you would the sweet little old lady next door who's never hurt a fly. And so it does make it really difficult um, to make decisions as to, you know, a guardian is getting sued for 30 million from another case. Wow. Isn't that interesting? It's going to get really deep. Uh, her losing her maybe because she knew a lot of secrets. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, wow. Yeah. Affected how she has, well, you know, that's potentially not, you know, necessarily at the start of her career, but I'm sure at least towards the end and potentially why her husband, who was obviously not a great guy, had left the marriage. All right. So let's keep going on with this. <laughs> so this is an amazing cake. First of all, I need to give a huge no, shout out to your pops department. Best in the, in the business. My amazing. Uh -huh. Like uh -huh. incredible. Look at this. Right. So what we're going to do here is we're going to take this cake and I'm going to try to blow it up for your birthday. Okay. Is that okay? Yes. <laughs> All right. So come on in here. What we're going to do is use some liquid nitrogen. And so liquid nitrogen is a liquid, obviously, but it's something that wants to be in a gas. And so it's going to boil. Beautiful. All right. So I'm going to let that get all down in there. <laughs> and now, Wendy, you're going to stay there. Okay. But you're a very important <laughs> person. Do not move. Love it. Love it. Love it. Okay. So I'm putting that in here. Now I'm going to come behind okay. you. Okay. Okay. So now here's what's happening. Liquid what? nitrogen wants to boil. You stay there. Don't you dare move. Okay, so liquid nitrogen wants to boil. It wants to be in the gas state. So what's happening is the liquid is going into a gas. You can hear it. You can hear it. And now gas is building up. It's hitting against the plastic bottle. It's slamming against the, all the corners. Wait a minute. Yeah, just wait. Just wait. You said your birthday's on Sunday, right? Yes. So what happens on your birthday? We blow up a cake. Yes? Yeah. Okay, so what's going to happen yeah. here, like I said, is the <laughs> nitrogen has this vapor pressure and it's building and building. So at the very yeah. bottom Good of point. that trash Good can, point, we've got about Pam. two Good or three point. inches of water and it's really hot water. You can hear it. Can you hear it? It's like crackling. <laughs> so it's building up pressure. And so it's boiling. The gas is coming up. It's going to hit the top of the soda bottle. It's like punching into the sides right now. And then hopefully... And <laughs> <laughs> I think he's just excited for science. It's called it's oh. elemental. The hidden chemistry in everything it's available right now. Ask Wendy is next. <laughs> Please welcome Michael Bolton. Let's see how she does with Michael Bolton, who I think is that awesome. Okay, we're gonna stop. We're gonna stop this real fast. Because I want to say that Michael Bolton has also had a recent health diagnosis. So let me just double check this real quick because I want to say that poor Michael has come out with some type of health issue as well. Um, and I was like, oh wow. Here we go. He has a brain tumor. Michael Bolton has a brain tumor. Did you know that Michael Bolton has a brain tumor? So it says that. This is People Magazine, guys. Let me just share this and then we'll go back to Miss Wendy. Hold on. I'm going to I'm going to stop this. Hold on. Let me bring this up about Michael cuz we've got Paul Wendy over here with a uh isn't this wild? Got Paul Wendy over here with a uh, dementia. We got Michael Bolton. Now that we're fine, I found out 
had recently, this was diagnosed on the, is this showing up now? Yes. This showed up on the 24th of January of this year. 5th of January, sorry. That he, he had a break from touring, touring to focus on his recovery. Uh, he had recently been diagnosed with a brain tumor. And he's 70 years old now. And so that he's just going to be recovering. And he was supposed to go out on tour. So, yeah. Poor Michael Bolton over here. Um, he also had something recently go on. So, yeah. That's kind of wild. And yeah. So yeah. Wow. Yes. <laughs> right. So it's kind of like, wow, this is Wendy's last episode clips. Here she is with Michael Bolton, who, who himself recently, sadly, had his own diagnosis. So let's bring Miss Wendy back up where she interviews these two. So let's see how these two do together. Okay. This is interesting to watch now. Doing? In light of all of these things. What are you doing? What are you doing? I understood that um, someone has a birthday coming up. Sunday! Yeah, my birthday on Sunday! So I thought it might be a good idea if I could get you all to sing along with a happy birthday. Okay! Today. Is that okay? okay? I think they always love the money, happy girl. Happy birthday to you. But they love the fame. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Wendy. Happy birthday to you. I think performers just love to perform. I think that's why they just never quit. It's like, it's like doctors and attorneys. They don't quit either. Happy birthday. Thank uh, you for having you me. You look terrific. Well, look likewise. Count. Look, uh, thank you for the song. Oh, it's a pleasure. I, I was just What's very happy. I'm kind of sad for really. this could happen and that I could potentially surprise you. Aging is hard. Oh, they cut back quick. Thank you to Serendipity Free for my though. birthday cake. I it's know. to the audience. I have a surprise yeah. for you. I think that was the only clip that we're all out getting there. treated to a lunch at Serendipity 3. Yeah. Make sure. It's reopened. It's a location reopened. We'll be right back. Thank you, Sarah. Uh -oh. no, so oh my God, why is she smelling it? Wendy, you're out of control. Sorry if this is loud, guys. I didn't even think we can make it past a six weeks sneak peek. Honestly, <laughs> so the idea that we are wrapping up our 12th season is miraculous. Wow. Thank you so much for supporting our messy little show. And thank you for accepting us in the spirit in which this show has been done since we first started. We just do what we do. Yep, and they did. that's what this we do. Was and that's show. it. And it so was her birthday. for me, yep. um, uh, my son just yep. landed. So he's here for the weekend. And so that's how I'm starting. Wow. So this is after um, all the stuff with the husband, yeah, I so believe. Yeah, so that's how things are starting off with me. And so we'll see you in two After the husband left her for the weeks, mistress that September he impregnated. 20th. I want to thank Michael Bolton and Kate the Chemist, also my co-host, my studio audience. Yeah. I love you for watching our show. Have a wonderful weekend and a wonderful summer, and I'll see you next time on Wendy. Bye-bye. Yeah. Right. Yes. Yes, she does. She acts. She looks. She absolutely does. Yeah. Wow. That was actually. Um, yeah, that was uh, kind of sad. Actually, I want to say that was a uh, that was a little. You know, you could kind of see that if you watch any of her earlier. So. Oh, he should have just left. Don't cheat. Yeah, he should have. He should have just left. You know, just go. Just go. So I thought we could take a look at what is alcohol-induced dementia real fast. And then we're going to take a quick look at the documentary. Not all of it, obviously. Just a few minutes. I didn't know. Just let me know um, if you're interested in me 
showing like some of her like worst moments <laughs> just so you could kind of maybe take a look at what she used to be like uh, there was like a uh i saw on one of the channels there was like her like like moments where she was like being the meanest possible and you may see how she used to be you want to see that okay well let's take a look at that then okay let me bring this up real fast. I just wanted to bring up what is alcohol related to dementia because you're going to be hearing this a lot for her and she is not obviously, that is not what her press release from supposedly her care team. Okay, we got lots of yeses here. Okay, we're going to take a look at that then. Okay, so this is from the Dementia Australia. What they say this is, is that it's a dementia related to excessive drinking of alcohol. It affects the memory, learning, and other mental functions. You may also hear terms like Korsakoff syndrome. And this is one I used to hear a lot when I was working. And we studied this one a lot in uh, healthcare is the Wernicke Korsakoff syndrome. And they are particular forms of alcohol related brain injury which may be related to alcohol-related dementia. So there's all these different types of syndromes. That's why when people start using lots of different types of blanket terms, like over here, this is Dementia Australia. Uh, they have all the different things about the different types of dementia, the vascular that I spoke about, the Lewy body I spoke about. We talked about the Alzheimer's. Um, also, obviously, the HIV associated, I've seen that dementia too. So, obviously, the uh, symptoms are some of the things that people have talked about, the impaired ability to learn new things, personality changes, which we kind of talked about whether or not her getting, like, mean and nasty was really a result maybe of her getting this disorders, um, you know, and sometimes when people do get medical disorders like these, it can bring out kind of the worst parts of their personality. So if they kind of were this way, they can get really like worse with it, like really mean and nasty. I mean, I have had so many spouses whose husbands have physically lashed out, punched, kicked, I mean, physically damaged the spouse who is caring for this person at end of life with dementia because the husbands they start getting superman strength and stuff it is wild i can tell you having worked with those types of patients it is not like how they show death on tv or in any movie anybody who's experienced with a loved one or anybody will know that is not how it goes which is how yeah. So obviously, obviously, let me not try to problems with balance. And you saw that she was like having to get in wheelchairs. Lots of people having to help her walk. She's holding on to furniture. They have decreased initiative and spontaneity. And we saw that too, that she was not delivering the lines. And you'll see this because we're going to look at some of her older stuff from like years ago. She has difficulty with clear and logical thinking and so forth. Those who get it, well, obviously, anyone who drinks excessive amounts of alcohol over a period of years may develop these conditions, but most do not. It is not known why some very heavy drinkers develop dementia or Wernicke Korsakoff syndrome, while others do not. Diet and other lifestyle factors may play a role. So that's why, you know, this. It's not. It's, you know, this alcohol. These conditions most commonly affect men over the age of 45 with a long history of alcohol abuse, though men and women of any age can be affected. The risk clearly increases for anyone who drinks high levels of alcohol on a regular basis for a long time. And obviously about the treatment, they just again say that you need to get there early. You have to abstain from alcohol. Obviously diet has to improve. You have to replace the thiamine and vitamin B1. Uh, we used to call those banana bags at, our, uh, at the hospital. I think it also has potassium into that too. And you would have to give those what we used to call because it it's super yellow looking because of the thiamine and the, or the potassium, I believe. One of the two. <laughs> but one of them made it look like a banana bag. We used to call them banana bags. Anyway. And then obviously support for the person with dementia, their family and carers. Because it is really hard. 
uh, managing dementia. Just it's many people who develop alcohol related dementia are young. And this can mean that they and their family and carers will need extra consideration. Yeah. Because, and Wendy Williams, remember, she is only 59 years old. Okay. Let's go over. You said your aunt has dementia and she's only 71. She was mean and nasty before. And so, man, it's right. Sometimes it brings out the worst. You're like, if you're already mean, you're going to get real mean. I'm telling you she was less mean. Oh, okay. Yeah. They used to have theories that it was related to the vitamin decisions you get when you're an alcoholic. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and we've talked about with Foodie Beauty, her vitamin D deficiency and potentially it affecting her gait and how she walks. Um, I mean, there's so much that I personally in healthcare find fascinating. Uh, that's why, you know, a lot of these disorders, especially lymphedema, there it is a, even though it's working in the lymphatic system, it is often managed by vascular physicians and those in the vascular realm. And so it is advised very strongly not to consume alcohol when you have lymphedema. So if she was doing, uh, drinking alcohol with that diagnosis, she, you know, she really, you know, and obviously what you start to realize then is that somebody who is, you know, consuming these types of substances at the end of the day, that is a very deep mental health disorder and alcoholism certainly falls into the DSM-5 uh, for uh, mental health and is considered to be a very serious mental health addiction with potentially uh, we see hereditary components too. When we look at DNA of families, do we do see that there are certain uh, genetic factors that are involved in alcoholism. So it is something that we're starting to understand more of. And we talk about things like genomics and looking further into larger communities to kind of see where these types of trends can happen uh, in the community. But alcohol is obviously very dehydrating. It can be very harmful. It obviously can lead to uh, fatty liver disease, cirrhosis of the liver. Uh, the death from alcoholism is also a very painful death. Isides and liver failure is horrendous, um, very painful, a lot of fluid accumulation, very, 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 the person is very, uh, the really sad part I think about the liver failure is that the patient is, you know, often they've stopped drinking obviously because of the disease. They become very cognitively, you know, functioning at that point. Uh, because they're not fogged with the alcohol. And so I think they have, it's very hard mentally because they're very, I mean, they do have some mental damage too because they will get the alcohol. Some may not get the alcohol induced dementia. So they're very, you know, it, it's a very sad because they just are having to tap all this fluid out. But mentally it's like kind of like, with cancer patients too, if they're not getting brain metastasis and they're very still cognitively aware and very unwell. I just think it's got to be brutal. Okay, let's get over to this last little, let me go find this uh, thing on YouTube that we're going to take a look at her like best, best mean Wendy Williams clips uh, that she had. Like best, best moments. Here we go. That's what I was looking for. Okay. So there was one that was just a few minutes long. Uh, let's go. Let me see. Funny and shady moments. That's from a long time ago. I wanted to go back a while because I wanted to show the difference between her like years ago comparatively to how she was now. So I think actually looking at something 
from seven from years ago might be worth looking at. Let's look at this one. Sorry, guys. All right. <laughs> Sorry. It's disgusting because I kind of want to not. I want to go back a little bit because I kind of want to show how much more. Oh, so yeah, no, that you're bringing up a good point, and I will. I wanted to bring this up. Yes, she should not be drinking at all, and that's one of the reasons why I have kind of wanted to get into the ones and 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 also glitters and lasers. It's not just the calories, but they also have disorders that very much say that you should not be drinking alcohol with these disorders that it is not a good plan they are more than harmful when it comes to these lymphedema and lipidemias yeah that's something because that's something that they're very clear about for for management now you can go out and do obviously whatever you want because you're a grown adult and you have the choices and the decisions to do what you know whatever it is that you desire to do the thing that is probably most interesting is you know it's it is gonna be harmful in the end and so we all have and I think this is something that we need to advocate for ourselves in the medical settings you know and I've heard some really bad things about where people haven't you know had bad experience in healthcare which is why I'm trying to be here and you know show a different side of a health professional is somebody who's a little bit more approachable and sort of the thinking and the processes that we mentally go through when we're looking at you, the patient in front of us. There's a lot more that we are considering, especially when we come to nursing and caring for patients. And that's kind of the approach that I'm reaching is, you know, her family. And if we have interest, maybe we'll take a look um, but you know, really at this point, she is going to become very immobile. She will not be able to walk. And often, you know, there is a need for pain medications because the muscles can start to become more strictured if the person's uncomfortable. So if you see people in these really tight fetus positions at end of life, and they're not nice and loose and lying all relaxed in the bed, that's because they're not getting enough pain medication for the discomfort at end of life. And families are very hesitant to even give little amounts because they think they're going to decrease the respiratory. And I promise you the amounts are so small, it never could do it. And when you see them in that position, you just know the families are not wanting to medicate them with enough anti-anxiety and pain medications. And when the patient is properly medicated, you will have the patient looking lovely and relaxed and very comfortable in the bed, even with dementias. And so when I've had to manage these dementia patients in the home where the family is reluctant to use the medications that we use at end of life, which can include morphine, uh, lorazepam, also known as Ativan, which is an anti-anxiety medication, we can also use Haldol as well, depending if they're getting agitated. We will use uh, drops that are known as atropin that most people use for the eyes, but we actually use those to stop end of life secretions, to stop with that. People always want us to suction people. That can actually make things worse, not better. So, yeah. Yes. And I can to let my grandfather. Right. It is really hard, Kristen. And I literally have had to have come to Jesus moments with family and explain to them that they are putting their family in more abject pain. And that's why they're all tense and rigid like that. And that's how they're expressing pain and discomfort because they can no longer speak. And if the patient is not in that rigid and contracted position because you're properly using the medications as directed by a case manager like I did case management for hospice and I did end of life agitation management for like seriously terminally ill patients who I had to take care of the patients with dementia who were being super aggressive towards their loved ones at end of life because the families really didn't understand what was happening and often couldn't even medicate them 
And so I had to work with those patients. So I've worked with probably some of the worst, most difficult cases of terminal agitation and end of life that I've ever had to work with. Yeah. You didn't know that about atropine, Kat? Yeah, you actually have to start the atropine early. Uh, it goes a couple of drops under the tongue. And so, yeah, and that's how we can control end of life secretions. Sometimes they use the scop scopalamine patches too, uh, but often um, I think those may be uh, more expensive. I don't know. So often in the hospital, they'll do scopalamine patches behind the ear, but which are often used for vertigo too. But when you are actually in the outpatient, when the family member goes home on hospice, Atropin is uh, definitely used, along with uh, uh, rectal acetaminophen, uh, morphine, Haldol. We used to call these comfort packs. Uh, Bisacodal to make sure that the patient is not constipated because having not been able to move the bowel properly. Sorry to get into all this. Are you hospice? Uh, I used to do hospice shits and giggles. I did hospice for quite some time. I did uh, case management in the home for hospice patients, and I worked in an out or an inpatient uh, specific hospice uh, facility with cases of terminal agitation, you know, very difficult to manage end of life, very bad cancer, heart failures, uh, dementias end-stage renal disease, uh, all those types of different uh, diseases. So I, obviously COVID, I dealt with COVID. I was working during the time of COVID in that. And can we can choose to end our, right. Oh, right, 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 exactly. Yeah, yeah. I've heard some interesting things about that, um, you know, in Canada. And I'm always interested. And there are some states like Vermont and Oregon have some of those some of those things what happens if a patient has it well you know so that's a good question so what will happen if a family member does not have a family they will either become a usually a ward of the state so those patients would definitely be patients that either will be cared for in a long-term care facility that has specific areas for patients at end of life. And what will happen is a case manager like myself will, well, as I was at the time, I don't do that now. It was very, oh my gosh, a wild job. It was never ending. I paperwork and constantly being texted all hours of the day and night by people. Um, I, um, so they will go ward of the state and the state will have them in facilities and then they will end up, you know, being overseen by somebody who's a hospice case manager like myself, who works with obviously the doctors, the facility and the nurses and caregivers at that facility. So that's generally what will happen. And there will be times where there are patients who are the ward of the state and they will go, this is in the US, I'm not sure for other countries, and they will actually have to come into a facility like the one I worked at, sort of getting these patients more medically managed for pain, because sometimes these patients' pain would get so bad, and they would get highly agitated, and they just would not get properly managed in the facility, so they may come to us for a few days, we would get them managed medically again, and then they could be returned back to the facility they were at. And case management is still following up and making sure that they are cared for. So they actually do. There was a gentleman who had no family and he never could get managed for his nausea, for his heart failure. And so he actually stayed with us. So there are some that used to stay with us at the facility right till the end. And we were set up like a little house with like kitchens. And we used to have beautiful flowers in every room. And so it felt like a home instead of a facility. And so the patients and the families and anybody came in used to love it. Sometimes there can be times where we had a patient whose family member 
gave up their choice of what to do for this person at end of life. I guess the sister just did not want to make that choice. She had been estranged from the brother. He had been homeless. And we do get people who obviously who are unhoused that we take care of. And she decided not to want to take responsibility. And he ended up becoming a ward to a Jewish family services. So there are often religious organizations who also will become the uh, guardian of these folks. So, and that will be something that will be worked between social workers, the state, there's like people who go to courts to get all this stuff. There's a lot of processes behind people who do not have family members, but yeah. So it's always good if you know you don't to make sure that you have everything you want to have in place so that you can receive the care that you want to have at end of life. I know like for me, these are decisions I need to make. I don't have any family. I'm not married. I don't have any kids, you know? And so having worked in hospice and worked in healthcare, I have seen that. I've taken care of like Nur a lot of nurses at end of life too. Um, that's always been like a special gift. Like ones who've been really important to a lot of other nurses. There's been so many people that I was blessed to care for at end of life. So yeah, anyway, yeah, it's definitely be better insisted. He do. Oh gosh. Yeah. It's really hard, Kristen. I had a lady who, it was trying to insist because the doctors don't do a very good job of explaining, unfortunately. And they really do make sort of tell families like, oh, yeah, 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 we'll get them home. Yeah, we'll bring hospice in. Yeah, you know, and almost like make out that we're going to improve this patient's health and their hospice at this point. And it's the family thinks that everything in medicine, but when a body sets in motion to die, it is nothing that we can do at that point to reverse that process. And that was one of the most difficult things. And there are very certain amount of signs and I don't want to get too deep into this, but there are definitely very certain signs of somebody who is actively dying. And there is no amount of physical therapy, speech therapy, occupational therapy that will improve that person. And I used to have to sit and have conversations with family members and they would get very upset and very angry and think that I was trying to prevent services. And there's, you know, you know, sometimes when you have young cancer patients, things are a little bit different, but when you have somebody who's elderly and they have very distinct disorders going on and things are, you know, showing that, you know, that's kind of where, you know, you're moving to end of life, then it is a difficult conversation to have. It's really hard. It's very hard. And the doctors do a really poor job, really poor job. There's a pamphlet that explains the stage. My uncle was in hospice, but we didn't get until after he passed. I was mad about that. I'm so sorry. Cause I used to spend a lot of time educating families and because that was part of what I was trying to do when they would suddenly be brought in for terminal agitation was to try to explain, and I had, all, you know, it is very hard. It's part of the reasons why I probably burnt out and kind of taking a break. And I haven't really been open and honest about this on my life so much, but kind of taking a break from working actively, though I'm um, getting always, you know, this an agency called me today to, to, you know, because I obviously have a lot of experience and I'm offered very good sums of money uh, obviously to work and can work part time. I uh, just kind of just, it's very difficult sometimes to bring on so much of a lot of pain and suffering, especially nowadays we can intervene for such a long extended period of time that the cases get very complex, very distressing I think there's a lot of times it's just, oh, it's wild. It's wild. Yeah. It gets hard. It gets hard. So I'm just taking a little break from my career at the moment. Um, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. I actually was working in cardiac rehab. So I've been a nurse for quite some time 
And I was in grad school. I was doing just too much. I had a lot going on. Worked through COVID. Just kept on going, kept on going. Did all this hospice work. A lot of my patients obviously were dying from the panini. Um, so I had to be, you know, had to go in gear. Obviously, the fear of getting sick myself. Um, working with families, just th just the whole time during the sort of way the globe was at the time was very wild. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, thank you. And I'm, you know, in my mid-50s, I've been working since I was 11 years old. Uh, I still obviously am doing the channel, so, and I, you know, so I still feel like I'm being a nurse, you know? So my role of being a nurse, and actually, yeah, I worked through COVID. Yeah, absolutely. A and with patients passing from this disorder too, and having to actively have very um, chatty patients. And, oh, it's hard. I've had really young cancer patients. Those are some of the worst ones with kids. Really hard. Oh, thank you, Kristen. I'm hoping I can keep trying to provide great medical information. I am kind of trying to stay uh, away from all the drama necessarily because I'm just not a drama person. Um, still trying to do better stuff with the live, hoping that the quality is improving. Uh, the information is interesting. We get some great topics and we just build a great community here. Um, and just, you know, dispel any medical myths and rumors. I listen to so much, uh, medical misinformation that I just kind of also reached a point too, where I decided that. I wanted to try to take my nursing into a global online community and see if I could start to be a approachable face in healthcare to start to battle so much medical misinformation and so much stuff that's about medicine. And most of the commentators are journalists and it's, you know, they'll interview a doctor but it's like, and then Dr. Oz, don't even stop me about him. <laughs> yes, yes, and yes, and I will be hopefully having, Kristen, thank you for mentioning that, more, um, I have a diabetic educator, and I spoke about this the other day, planned. So I need to get back with her because she went on vacation. I wanted to let her get back from her holiday and get back to work. So I'm going to be, e be emailing her because we still have these type 2 diabetes questions to go back to. And I know Chantel thinks we're all in our health and all this nonsense and stuff. But in reality, she is just a catalyst to have conversations around health. In my, in my mind, for me, in my channel. It's really, I used to love Dr. Oz. Yeah, he when he went off on his political stuff, and then when he got called into congress or the senate or one of those places with all of those dodgy you know coffee bean supplements and you know that's when you have to sort of you know question a healthcare provider when they start pushing supplements and things because the majority when you listen to like doctors radio and any of these folks will tell you that most of those things are not beneficial to you as a person if your diet is that nutritionally deficient when you're young, then there's something wrong with your diet. Now, as we get older, yes, I would say once you start hitting your, you know, 40s, you know, you probably are having physiological changes, especially for us women when we start hitting through perimenopause and menopause and so forth, that we do want to get our labs checked. And I think even for men and women, for those of us who spend a lot of time indoors or just, you know, our body, as I always say, synthesizes vitamin D differently as we get older, we should be getting those levels checked because it can cause damage that could be long-term and potentially not reversible. So I think it is important to do those things, you know? So absolutely, yeah. 
He went. He did go off. He he went off the rail. All right, let's just get back to Wendy real quick. We'll finish off with just to show how she was, and then we're gonna let you guys go. This is quick. It's only five minutes. Oh, hold on, guys. Rita Aura, we're talking about you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, here I am. Here we are. Yes, another week. <laughs> Life could be worse. Oh, was that when she fainted on TV? No, not really. <laughs> this is the worst. This is the worst. This right. is the worst. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> That's what she said. And you know what? I, what was that? Okay, James. <laughs> <laughs> She's, she's got a point. Started, she's yeah. an icon. She's a legend. And she is the moment. Yeah. Now, come on now. Should she suffer? All right. Clap if you think she should suffer. <laughs> but first, there is a man yeah. in the front in the Suswan area wearing a full blown. How you doing? <laughs> yes. The socks, the sneakers. Thank you, my people, my people. Look, look. And so he's oh gosh, she got Cat right? Williams there, man. She asking for these. Oh. Eh, 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 eh. It's okay, it's okay, it's okay. Yeah. No, Halloween's not my favorite thing because I always feel as though that's a free pass for the killer. Don't Absolutely. let the killer get you. I don't like Halloween. Oh, her fashion sense and wild. goblins and for the killer in disguise to it show you out. Regular scarves have the ends yeah, where the come and just dream. finish off. I don't want to play music in the shower because I want to hear if the killer is coming. Don't you keep a bat from Yankee Stadium in your night table draw? They're so convenient. All, all you have to do is clunk one time with the killer. I've been aware of the killer since birth. Now, I, I hear that you don't, you think people are always gonna come and get you. No, the killer. And well, what was she doing in the stairwell? Cause that's where the killer is. And now we live in North Jersey. Where? But you're in Hasbro, well, the killer. You know, I believe in a lot of things, including the killer. You never know who you can meet online. He's the killer. He's the killer. He's the killer. The killer is everywhere. He sounds like he's the killer. The killer is on the loose. People are lurking. They're just waiting to get you. Yeah, I don't mean to scare you, but they are. Well, well, I think he's a little slow. Like, As I, a healthcare professional, one of the things that I noticed between watching this, her obviously like fever dream going on here, but her delivery and in the last episode, if you notice she seemed, as we call in sort of healthcare, she seemed like she was blunted in her, her sort of emotions, like that's a, t a term that we often use with dementia is that they seem blunted. Like they don't carry like her voice, her internet, her way she delivered her speech. It was lacking, you know, the sort of personality that she had here. So yeah, I watched up to Gupta from York cardiology. He's good, but so devastating. I can't hold on. Ah! Oh, I might have to check him out then. 
I do like to look at some devastatingly handsome men. Yeah, her eyes. Yeah. Well, she has Graves' disease, Pam. I don't know if you caught that part because you came in a little later. But the reason why is that she has a disorder known as Graves' disease, which was a disorder that Marty Feldman, uh, somebody reminded me, thank you, Marlene Dietrich, uh, that Marty Feldman, an actor from the UK, also had uh, that particular disorder. Okay, so I think we kind of get an idea. So just to finish out, we'll take just a couple of minutes. Oh, you missed that part. Yeah, yeah, she, yeah, that's uh, part of the press release. So yeah, that was, and she also had lymphedema too, or she still does because we're, I, I'm kind of talking like Wendy no longer with us, but Wendy is still here with us, obviously. So I thought we'd just take a first couple of minutes just to take a look at this Lifetime documentary. If you've not seen this documentary, I would recommend uh, obviously going over and taking advantage of it's on YouTube. And uh, it is also on Lifetime's own channel. We're going to go take a look at it on the Lifetime channel. Um, so it's kind of cool that they are not charging to watch it. And so, like I said, I don't want to get in trouble with Lifetime and uh, it's fair use. So let's get this one off the screen and I'll just give you a taster of this new one. But yeah, you can see her uh, personality and how she, you know, was really fast and really fast talking, very engaging with her audience, very engaging with her people and her set, her production engage you know was a lot more different yeah you yeah you're gonna have to check the documentary out and it's free and i think it's also been released on youtube so you can watch it on youtube does my dog like tennis balls she does Kristen. sometimes she pulls them out she asleep she Junebug got a bath today because it was unusually warm for february which means that we're gonna get some rain this weekend and so it was very warm today. So we actually did uh, take a little bath outside and then we went and air dried through the park. And then we got shouted at by some lady who was not very mentally stable, <laughs> which was wild. Oh, oh no, she got the zoomies from her bath time. She, she I didn't give her a chance to get zoomies because I didn't want her getting dirty. So. She didn't get a chance. We had to go and deflect the lady who started to shout abuse at us because I walked past her and looked at my dog. And she thought I was I was listening to her. She was unhoused, unfortunately. And uh, they tend to hang around sometimes. They've been, yeah. You love the Zoomies? I do too. Yeah, much more than, I, yeah, she's cute when she gets her little Zoomies. She is adorable. She does get Zoomies like every day. But in the moment, she's, She's just, she's tuckered out. Okay. She's just looking at me. She sits in the chair right next to me as I'm online. Okay. Let's bring up this last little bit. And I want to get out of here before eight o'clock because Are You Serious is about to go on. Karen's be Karen. Oh no, girl. This wasn't a Karen. This lady had psychological issues. And I think she was unhoused and she just, you know, thought I was looking at her. Well, I just turned my head to look at Junebug and just started screaming all sorts of wild profanity. So I actually did have to call the police uh, because supposedly uh, they somebody screamed at some other dog walkers the other day. So we're getting, unfortunately, sometimes when the weather gets nice, you know, yeah, it's getting, yeah, yeah, it was wild. Yeah, she was kind of out there. And then, uh, anyway, uh, I'm, she, thing is she don't realize i'm a nurse and uh it comes with the territory having to manage people with mental health so um i don't i just i just tell them to you know be quiet <laughs> i got a way of dealing with it hold on let me get out of this hold on let me get it shared to the screen hold on. let me present it let me stop this let me bring it on we're just gonna, a couple of minutes of this and then i'm gonna let you guys